When does protection become censorship? And where do we draw the line between freedom of speech and responsible content moderation? These are the questions that are stirring up a storm in the digital age. As we navigate the vast expanses of the internet, we are continually faced with the delicate balance between freedom and responsibility. Freedom of speech, a cornerstone of democratic societies, allows us to express our opinions without fear of retribution. It's the lifeblood of open conversation fueling everything from heated debates to the sharing of creative ideas. But with freedom comes responsibility, and in the digital realm, this responsibility takes on a whole new meaning. In this age of information, where a single tweet can ignite a firestorm of controversy, responsible content moderation becomes a critical task. Online platforms are like modern-day public squares where people from all walks of life come together to discuss, debate, and disseminate ideas. But unlike traditional public squares, these platforms are global, and the potential for harm is magnified exponentially. Imagine a world where every thought, every opinion, every piece of content is let loose in the digital wild without any form of moderation. It would be a place where hate speech, misinformation, and online harassment run rampant, drowning out the voices of reason and truth. This is the chaos that responsible content moderation seeks to prevent. But how do we decide what's acceptable and what's not? Who gets to make these decisions? And most importantly, how do we ensure that in the process of protecting us, these platforms don't end up stifling our freedom to speak our minds? These are complex questions with no easy answers, and they're questions that affect each and every one of us who uses online platforms. Whether we're posting a comment on a news article, sharing a meme on social media, or engaging in a political debate on a forum, the tension between freedom of speech and responsible content moderation impacts us all. As we delve deeper into this topic, remember, the question isn't only about what we can say, but also about what we should say. Think of an online discussion you've had recently. How might that conversation have been different if certain viewpoints were censored? Let's dive into some real-life case studies to explore this further. We're all familiar with the global reach and influence of social media platforms. They've become the town squares of the digital age where political discourse often happens. However, the power these platforms wield in shaping these discussions is immense, and at times, controversial. Take the case of a well-known political activist whose posts were removed from a popular platform. The activist was a vocal critic of the government, using the platform to share her views and mobilize her followers. However, when her posts were deemed to violate the platform's community guidelines, they were removed, and her account was suspended. This action sparked a heated debate. Supporters of the activist argued that the platform was infringing on her right to freedom of speech. On the other hand, the platform maintained its stance, arguing that it was acting responsibly to prevent the spread of potentially harmful content. But the ripple effects of this censorship go beyond just the activist and her followers. The removal of her content also impacted the broader political discourse. Conversations that were once open and diverse became more homogenous. The debate was essentially silenced and the platform lost a critical voice that challenged the status quo and provoked thought. In another instance, a high-ranking political figure had his account permanently suspended from a major social platform following a series of controversial posts. This action was unprecedented. It sent shockwaves through the online community, with many questioning the platform's role and responsibility in moderating content. Was it right for a private company to effectively silence a public figure? Or was it a necessary step to ensure the safety and integrity of the platform and its users? This event sparked a global conversation about the role of social media in political discourse. It highlighted the fine line between freedom of speech and responsible content moderation. It also underscored the power these platforms have in shaping public opinion. With the ability to control what content is seen and shared, they can significantly influence the political landscape. These case studies illustrate the delicate balance between ensuring freedom of speech and maintaining responsible content moderation. They show how censorship can shape political discourse, influencing what we see, what we discuss, and ultimately, what we believe. As we continue to navigate the digital age, these issues become increasingly complex. The decisions made by social media platforms today will undoubtedly have profound implications for the future of political discourse and democracy. Censorship in political discourse can shape public opinion and impact the democratic process. Now, think of a popular social norm today. Would it exist if voices championing change were silenced? 
Consider the societal shift that has occurred in the past decade. Movements like Hash Me Too and Black Lives Matter have reshaped our understanding of sexual harassment and racial inequality, challenging norms that have been in place for centuries. But what if these voices had been censored? What if the platforms they used to spread their messages had decided these topics were too controversial, too unsettling, too disruptive? Let's look at the Hash Me Too movement. Born out of a tweet it quickly grew into a global phenomenon with millions of women sharing their experiences of sexual harassment and assault. It was a tidal wave of stories that couldn't be ignored, and it forced society to confront the reality of a problem that had been swept under the rug for too long. The movement challenged the societal norm that deemed such experiences as private matters, not to be discussed publicly. But imagine if Twitter had decided to censor the hashtag, if they had deemed it inappropriate or too controversial, the momentum of the movement might have been stifled, the voices of millions of women could have been silenced, and the societal shift that followed may never have occurred. Similarly, the Black Lives Matter movement has fundamentally changed the conversation around racial inequality in America. It has forced society to confront the systemic racism that is so deeply ingrained in our institutions. But this change was not easy. It was met with resistance, with attempts to silence these voices to censor their messages. It's easy to see how censorship could have hindered the progress of these movements. It could have suppressed the voices of the marginalized, maintaining a status quo that perpetuates inequality and injustice. It's a sobering reminder of the power of censorship and the danger it poses to societal evolution. However, it's also important to note that the internet is not a lawless land. Platforms have a responsibility to protect their users from harmful content. The challenge is finding the balance between allowing freedom of speech and ensuring responsible content moderation. But as we've seen, this balance is not always easy to achieve. It's a complex issue, with no one-size-fits-all solution. Each case is unique and requires careful consideration. It's a tightrope walk, one that demands constant vigilance and a commitment to uphold the principles of free speech while protecting the welfare of users. As we navigate this new digital landscape, it's crucial that we continue to question and challenge the decisions made by these platforms. We must ensure that the voices of change are not silenced, that the momentum of movements is not stifled, and that societal evolution is not hindered. Censorship can stifle societal evolution, suppress marginalized voices, and maintain status quo. Content moderation is not merely a task, but a responsibility. But who decides what's acceptable and what's not? Delving into the realm of content moderation, we find it's a maze of complexities and challenges. Every day, billions of pieces of content are posted on the internet, and somewhere someone has to decide what stays and what goes. And that, my friends, is no small feat. In the heart of this challenge lies the conundrum of algorithms versus human moderators. Algorithms, those tireless digital workers, are designed to sift through vast amounts of data at an unprecedented speed. They can identify and remove content that violates guidelines, often even before it sees the light of day. But, as any tech enthusiast will tell you, an algorithm is only as good as its programming. It can't understand context or nuances, it can't empathize or make moral judgments. It's a machine, and it operates within the confines of its code. On the other side of the coin, we have human moderators, real people, with real emotions and real understanding. They can interpret context, empathize with users, and make decisions based on a broader understanding of societal norms. But they're also fallible. They can make mistakes, they can be biased, and they can be overwhelmed by the sheer volume of content that needs moderating. Which brings us to another significant challenge of content moderation, the potential bias and subjectivity in deciding what constitutes harmful content. The lines between free speech and harmful content can be blurry. What one person sees as an offensive post, another might view as a valid expression of their beliefs. How do we navigate these murky waters without infringing on someone's right to express their views? Furthermore, there's the issue of cultural differences. What's considered acceptable or offensive can vary widely from one culture to another. A joke that's harmless in one country might be deeply offensive in another. It's a global stage out there and content moderation needs to account for this diversity. And finally, let's not forget the psychological toll on the moderators themselves. They are the unsung heroes working behind the scenes, often exposed to the worst that humanity has to offer. The impact on their mental health is a concern that needs to be addressed, a challenge that needs to be met. 
So, how do we strike a balance? How do we ensure that the digital landscape is a safe and inclusive space without stifling creativity and freedom of expression? It's a question without a straightforward answer, a puzzle that we're all trying to solve. Content moderation is a complex task that holds significant power in shaping online discourse. It's a responsibility that requires careful thought, constant evaluation, and a commitment to fairness and transparency. It's a challenge that pushes us to continually redefine the boundaries of the digital world. So, where do we go from here? How do we balance freedom of speech with the need for responsible content moderation? The journey to finding equilibrium between free expression and accountability is a complex one, but there are strategies that can help us navigate this terrain. One of these is increasing transparency from platforms. Just as we expect openness from our governments and corporations, we should demand the same from our digital platforms. When platforms make decisions about what content is allowed and what isn't, they should explain their rationale. This way, users can understand the rules and their application better. In the spirit of transparency, platforms should also provide clear recourse for those who feel their voices have been unjustly silenced. Another strategy is user education. It's crucial for users to understand the implications of their online behavior, both on a personal level and a societal one. This means not only understanding the rules of a platform and the potential consequences of violating them, but also recognizing the impact of one's digital footprint. Through education, users can make more informed decisions about what to share and how to interact online. More nuanced moderation policies also play a vital role. One-size-fits-all rules may not always work in a diverse and complex digital space. Instead, policies should reflect the varied contexts and cultures that exist online. They should be adaptable, taking into account factors such as intent, harm caused, and cultural nuances. And lastly, we need to foster an environment of open dialogue and active participation. Users, platforms, and policymakers should work together to shape the digital space. This collaboration can bring about a more rounded understanding of the challenges and potential solutions, leading to more effective and balanced policies. The path forward requires constant negotiation and balance to ensure the digital space remains a platform for all voices. Navigating the digital age is indeed a balancing act, but through transparency, education, nuanced policies, and open dialogue, we can strive to uphold both freedom and responsibility in our online world. As we've seen, the digital age presents a complex dilemma when it comes to freedom of speech and content moderation. We've delved into the intricate dance between the freedom to express oneself and the responsibility of platforms to moderate content. The stakes are high and the balance is precarious. We've explored the influence of censorship on political discourse, where the line between hate speech and differing opinions often blurs. The challenge lies in protecting the right to express political beliefs, while simultaneously preventing the spread of misinformation and harmful ideologies. The digital world has become a new frontier for political battles, where words are the weapons and social media platforms are the battlegrounds. We've also dissected the impact of censorship on societal norms. It's a domain where the boundaries of acceptable speech are continuously evolving. The digital realm has become a mirror reflecting society's shifting values and norms. However, this reflection is often distorted by algorithms and content moderation policies, leading to a skewed perception of reality. One of the major hurdles we've discussed is the challenge of content moderation. With billions of users across the globe posting content every second, it's a Herculean task to filter out harmful content without infringing on freedom of speech. Artificial intelligence and machine learning have been employed to aid in this task, but these tools are not without their flaws. Bias in algorithms and the lack of context understanding can lead to unwarranted censorship or the overlooking of harmful content. To sum it up, the digital age is a double-edged sword. It has democratized information, allowing voices from every corner of the world to be heard. Yet, it has also created a new platform for hate speech, misinformation, and harmful content. Navigating this landscape requires careful thought, innovation, and a commitment to uphold the principles of free speech while also maintaining a safe and respectful digital environment. In the end, the goal should be to foster a digital environment that respects freedom of speech, but also encourages responsible and respectful discourse.